We're going to be ranking all 110 dinosaurs in Jurassic World Evolution 2, from the lowest to the greatest. Some of your favorites may be in a lower ranking than you believe, while others shall rejoice as their favorites reach the top. But one guarantee for this video is that controversy shall arise and chaos shall reign supreme. Hello everybody and welcome to a very biased video. I'm your host Rex Gaming Bro here in Jurassic World Evolution 2 for another video. And in today's video we're going to rank all the dinosaurs, the pterosaurs of the sky, and of course the creatures of the deep lagoons in our favorites and our least favorites. This is going to be quite a long video so I would recommend grabbing some popcorn to throw at the TV or computer or phone in disagreement with my rankings and a drink to rejoice when yours are up high. As primarily a sandbox builder my ranking will be much more superficial rather than how easy a dinosaur is to handle in challenge mode or such or how the game itself ranks Set. No, my list will be based on how biased I am, how well the skins for these dinosaurs go that they come with, and how often do I use these species in Jurassic World Evolution 2. But remember, as Mr. Grady once said, Why are you calling me Mr. Grady? <laughs> I'm sorry, as Owen Grady once said to, They're dinosaurs, wow enough. Us. I may have some lower on the list, but I still love all the dinosaurs no matter what. Just some reach higher than others, it seems. But once more, I shall stress that this is my personal opinion, and while I had to make many of Sophie's choices in this list, I still love them all. I did a ranking for each group of species last year, but with so many DLCs and updates that have come by and since then, that list is no longer viable for my rankings. So you may think you know my list based on those lists of the past, but you do not. And for me personally, at the bottom of the list, it comes from my least favorite DLC. It is none other, and here comes controversy reigning its head, the Scorpius Rex. And I know people are like, what? Why is this guy so low? Well, Scorpius Rex for me, he just doesn't win too much for me because while I do like the hybrid, I don't like using him in my parks. He doesn't provide me with the inspiration that other species or even the other hybrids do. And like, he doesn't really scream, I want to put him in my park, no offense. Even though he has tremendous skin options and such, I prefer him as a battle royale dinosaur over a park dinosaur, if you know what I mean. Which, if this were based on my favorites in Battle Royales, he may be much higher, but as a game whole for park builders, it's just not the one for me, unfortunately, guys. Scorpius Rex does not win me over with its popularity. I'm not going to give it the ranking you think it does. The second last on the list, and the first of the creatures of the lagoons, the Tylosaurus, which I gotta say, like, it's really unfortunate that this one is down here, but just while it has some decent skins, such as this one, which is probably one of the best Lagoon species skins for, like, the original version of this game, it unfortunately does not have a f uniqueness to it, really. It's in the size similar to Mosasaurus, but doesn't really do anything to help it stand out, other than the fact that it has a face that very few love in the franchise. And considering that we had a much better design for Jurassic Park the game, which I know many people wish was in this model, it's unfortunately not high on my ranking. Of all the raptors, Deinonychus unfortunately falls very short from the stack, as, well, the design for it while making it stand out, does not really do it justice. Deinonychus is one of the most popular dinosaurs in my heart, but unfortunately this design does not do it justice. And I know it's because, well, the Velociraptor basically is the Deinonychus, if, but I'm not going to go into that whole roster. Just unfortunately, the bizarre choice of its new design doesn't really help it stand out. It had so much potential when they first announced it being part of the first game, but unfortunately, they chose to not really give it justice. And also, in terms of skins, it doesn't even have that many good ones in this game. It has a few, 
but mostly they're a lot lackluster in comparison to it in the first game, which is why it is third at the bottom of the list. The Corythosaurus, once again, like in the first game, was given very poor skins, and that basically is why it's down here. Like, its skins are not really the greatest. Like, it's got some nice color for them, but once you add a pattern, it really doesn't work. Like, other than, like, the crest on its head, the body coloration just doesn't work for this guy really too well. Other than, like, the Rana, which seems to work with most of the skins that I like putting him on, it just doesn't really blend in very well, and it doesn't make me want to use it as much as other Hadrosaurs on the list later on. Now, Mudabarosaurus is one that I actually quite like, but actually forgot was in the game all in all, because, well, I don't know, I guess I just, I just forgot. Like, it's been in both games, but... Both times I've forgotten it exists so many times that I think for me that just put it down in the ranking because when you're a dinosaur that um, your your host, as you can see, forgets is in the game multiple times, it really doesn't stand out. Even though it has great skins, it just doesn't stand out among the others other than being totes adorbs. But then again, most of the hadrosaurs are totes adorbs, which in a totes adorbs struggle, forgetfulness really does pack a punch. Much like Mudabarosaurus, Majungasaurus falls flat for me due to forgetfulness among other carnivores as well. And this is a shame because Majungasaurus is such an underrated dinosaur, being the only one we've gotten from Madagascar in both games. But unfortunately, due to it not feeling really unique among them, it just doesn't win for me, unfortunately, in this game. And also because it feels like it's reusing bits and pieces of others. With its calls being basically a mix of ceratosauruses and T-Rexes, it doesn't really help it at all because it's basically being the recycle board for what didn't work for good species later on in the list. When your best skin was showcased in the trailer but is locked by challenge mode, it does pack a nasty bite to your reputation when you already have a struggle relationship with fans from the first game, which is why Notosaurus falls here at 104 on the list, because unfortunately, the skin that was shown in the trailers where it was a proper turquoise vibrant beauty, unfortunately, doesn't unlock, and really, the rest of the skins, other than like this mangrove one, the rest feel very basic all in all, and well, the pattern just doesn't really add too much to it. It gives it a little bit of coloration, but not enough to say, hey, I'm really here to stay. Other than, like, little veins on their shoulder pads, Notosaurus just doesn't stand out among others for popping out. Especially for such a small dino. Now, I love Troodon. Even though it's no longer classified as a real dinosaur, I still really like it, but... Unfortunately, I just don't really use it that much in the game. Like, I've only used it a few times since the game's launch, and even though it's got amazing skins that best suit its venomous appearance, I gotta say, that's not enough for me to win him among others, unfortunately. Troodon just falls short on being unique enough to win, especially when he's got recycled compy calls like he did in the first game. Marodactylus is actually one of my favorite pterosaurs. I love the story behind its name on like a murdered girl of a tribe or something. It's very creepy and such and gives it a nice reputation for being something you wouldn't want to come across, whether in the game or if they were brought back from extinction. But unfortunately for this game, it doesn't really get much love due to the fact that it has rather poor skins. Like, for example, this one here. This is probably the best combination of skin and pattern, but as you can see, the pattern just really doesn't stand out. It feels like it's like a pattern that was once vibrant, but unfortunately was left on the shelf too long and got quite dusty, which is a weird description, I know, but unfortunately that's the way I feel with its patterns. Like, this is it without a pattern, but you already see nice purple vibrance there, but then you add it, and you get these faded purpley looking lines, which just really 
they actually look more like dust now than they do here. This looks all right, but all in all, even for colors, they're not really good in my sort of category. For me, I either want ones like this that are just full on natural looking or ones that really pop. But for Mardactylus, it doesn't have enough of either to really win my heart. The Chasmosaurus was one that I really didn't expect to put this low on the list originally, but the more I thought about it, the more it made sense. Skin-wise, it's got some decent ones. The patterns really help it pop out, but unfortunately, among the other Ceratopsians, it just doesn't really have a spot for me in terms of use. There's so many others that I prefer to use, and even though I do like using it for a smaller Ceratopsian, it just doesn't really get to be used as much, especially when it doesn't have as many great skins as other Ceratopsians on the list, or for some of them, I'm more biased towards. Archaeomnithomimus is one that I love using, but just doesn't really do anything for me at the same time. I forget, I've forgotten that it was in the game multiple times until like one of my live streams, if I recall, I was reminded of it because it was like, hey, do you want to go and rescue some Archaeomnithomimus? And I was like, wait, that's in the game? And yet, considering it's the one that Claire said it, Kids have trouble saying, I guess it's also troubling to remember that it's in this game. Even though it's got great skins, is an Ornithomimid, which gives it a win automatically, Archaeonithomimus just doesn't cut through with the other two of its species. Camarasaurus is one that just makes me feel so negative when I see it, just because it always looks really sad and depressed. Even among sauropods with its bad skins, because this is honestly the best skin for Camarasaurus in my opinion and just looking at it it just looks so depressed with itself that it just makes me feel in a negative move which is why I've like never really used him too much but he's still a sauropod and I still love him because he's cute but just not cute enough to win over the sadness he fills my heart with. Myosaurus is one that also, like Camarasaurus, fills me with sadness as it looks like it's always contemplating why it's here, but not in a positive, funny way. More in a, I am sad, and considering that it's the mother hadrosaur, which its name implies as well, it's very sad, as Myosaurus is actually one of my favorite dinosaurs of all time, and one of my f best friends is actually a favorite dinosaur as well. But unfortunately for this game, with lackluster skins, a sad expression constantly adorning it, Myosaurus does not top any other hadrosaurs that are yet to be on the list. Talk about a dinosaur that just really got screwed over in this game. In the first game, Syntatosaurus had awesome skins, as I recalled. It was one that I used more often than most hadrosaurs because I loved its uniqueness, I loved its awesome beauty, but unfortunately for this game, a lot of its skins got flushed down the toilet and most of them became really pale and really boring. And for patterns, even more so. Other than like the crest which always looks great, the pattern on the body just didn't really do anything. Other than this one that just fits it very nicely, most of them don't really work together. I once held Monolophosaurus in, like, high tier. He originally, when he first came into the game, was probably in my top 25, guaranteed. But unfortunately, due to time, I just didn't use him as often. And unfortunately, that really pushed him back for me in my list. I like Monolophosaurus. He's a really unique dinosaur. His scene in Camp Cretaceous Season 3 was quite the treat. It gave me a Jurassic nostalgia that I hadn't felt for many of times in the show, but unfortunately, regardless of all that, this game has not won him over to be higher. Having literally no really good skin, Sorapelta just falls flat, and being one that I'm disappointed in falling flat, as it's quite a unique dinosaur with his armored spikes and armored look, he's should stand out more in the list, but unfortunately, just due to the fact that really he doesn't have anything that fits my category of skins too well, other than like one or two, he does not win higher on this list. 
but he is still a unique creature, which I'll always take uniqueness over repetitiveness. It pains me to put the Vacuum Mouth this low on the list, but unfortunately he was done dirty with skins as well, because his skin roster is not really as great as it was in the first game. Being one inclusion in the other game for, through DLC, that was quite welcome to many, including yours truly. But unfortunately, this game didn't really want to give him the love he deserved, especially for skins. And with other ones that are more unique than he is, he just falls a little lower on the roster for sauropods for me, unfortunately. Still, a cutie vacuum mouth will still have a place in my heart as being totes adorbs. Look at that face. It's too cute to say no to. A, br a brand new dinosaur with great skins? What can go wrong? Well, unfortunately, not standing out among the others of his size standards, Megalosaurus falls down in the list for me, unfortunately. He has golden skins, and he's got like the golden standard of being a new creature for the games, but unfortunately, he does not win just on those because I don't really use him too much. When it comes to medium carnivores, He's one of the last that I ever looked to when picking one, which is why he's down here at number... the, Which is why he's down here at number 94. Ichthyosaurus is one that mainly falls flat due to being not really unique among its um, kind for sizes, other than being one of the few fish-looking aquatics that we have. It doesn't really make its presence stand out, other than the fact that, like things like Compies or Homalocephalae, it gets eaten by everything. And that doesn't really help it in standing out. I wish that it had more behavioral options, like, say, it jumping out of the water or something, like it would in real life, most likely. But unfortunately, because of the fact that it's made only just to swim back and forth and then get eaten, it doesn't really win anything for me. It needs more behavioral traits for it to make it unique, and then I think it'll be much better. But with the behavioral traits that have already been added, maybe we could see stuff like that added very soon. Wyangosaurus was one of my favorite Stegosaurs in the first game, and while I still love him in this game, he is filled with controversy for in terms of a marketing ploy for me. And that is in two things. The first is the fact that his skin roster has decreased since the first game. As he had all-time winner skins in the first game, he did not have really any for this game. He has a few, but not enough to push him higher. And the second and financial reason for this is that he was added to a DLC in order to be put in the game. And being one of the first dinosaurs you would get in the first game doesn't really sit well for many fans, including myself. Which is why I had to push him down on the list. I'm sorry you cute squeaker, but unfortunately Frontier's hand messed you up very deeply for some people. Gigantospinosaurus, the not actually giant stegosaurid that its name would imply is still a nice dinosaur, but unfortunately just doesn't really stick out among the others all too well. And considering that he's, his uniqueness is sort of represented a little bit better with other species higher on the list, I think that Gigantospinosaurus unfortunately is a stegosaur that does not sit well on the list among others of its kind. Even though it's got great skins, a great personality, and some demonstration of great spikes that unfortunately never get used as a weapon. Coming all the way from Hogwarts itself, the Draco Rex is one Pachycephalosaur that unfortunately has fallen into obscurity really, due to real life events of paleontology, and the fact that we have, well, three other much more popular ones for the games and the franchise as a whole, Draco Rex for me falls down on the list, even though he's got some great skins. But unfortunately, this dragon from Hogwarts is not going to win the hearts with his fiery personality, because the other ones have better personalities in their favor.
Diplodocus was done dirtier than any for skins imaginable for sauropods. Probably in my top three sauropods in the first game, unfortunately falls down on the list extremely due to the fact that unfortunately its skin roster is non-existent really. There is not one skin that really, really makes it stand out, and unfortunately, that has put him down in favor for me for the game. Even though I use him quite often, it's not enough to put him much higher on the list, unfortunately. While being cute and named after the father of Jurassic Park as a franchise as a whole, not John Hammond, Michael Crichton, the Crichtonosaurus does not win higher on the list due to the fact that it is very um, forgetful in terms of the other ankylosaurids, and due to the fact that its skin selection does not really help it stand out either. I feel like ankylosaurids, among all others, were done way more dirty than they were in the first game. I could a lot of them in the first game had really good skin rosters in my opinion, but unfortunately it was not treated as well for them in this game. I'm sorry to say. Sungariptorus is one that while is cute and also very dangerous, Sungariptorus unfortunately does not win for me on skin roster as a whole. And also doesn't really win on being unique for behavior-wise for its whole stature. With a unique jawline and such, and it's a unique size, I wish that it had a little bit more to make it stand out, unfortunately. And patterns altogether don't really do much for it other than the crest, which is really where it all goes for these guys. But unfortunately, it was not enough for this guy. The creature that gave me nightmares as a kid in Walking with Dinosaurs unfortunately does not give me the same nightmares in this game. While I'm okay with the design choice and such, the color roster for Lyplerodon does not really help it stand out when it's in the murky lagoons. Some of them look okay here like this one, but in the lagoon, due to the murkiness of it, it just really doesn't help it pop out, which is a problem that many of the original Lagoon creatures had, including ones not yet on the list. And unfortunately, the fact that it really doesn't do anything to threaten other Lagoon species, other than like Ichthyosaurs, which even I think Ichthyosaurs can kill it sometimes, I think that it just doesn't really have enough to make it stand out among the others anymore. Rest in peace, my creature of walking with dinosaurs. You're not who we remember you as. Minmi is absolutely adorable and quite unique on this list, and yet, unfortunately, is a quite unused in my parks. I've used him only a few times, and unfortunately due to that, I had to lower him on the list. But despite that, I do enjoy his presence whenever I see him rolling around, or even nipping at a sibling's tail, even though that is quite a naughty feat if you ask me. Allure Titan is one that I still love using due to the fact that it is the unique um, hadrosaur of them all, as it's not the one that feels like it's bulky or too small, but it feels mighty and majestic for its height, as it stands up like a proud ruler of its kind, and has the colors to boot it for. But unfortunately for me, I just don't use him enough to appreciate that mightiness. So maybe in the future if I use him more, he'd be higher on the list. But for now, I think he's fine where he is in terms of the amount I use him. Werehuosaurus is one that absolutely kills me to put down here, but unfortunately there's just some other stegosaurids that stand out a little bit more. But Werehuosaurus has great colors, a uniqueness with it being very nostalgic to classic drawings of Stegosaurus and such, with the plates being more rounded, and still having the eyebrows of wisdom that it does. It stands out very well for me and has a great place in my heart, but unfortunately not high enough for me to put him higher on the list. 
While basically being a Triceratops, Taurosaurus actually does help itself stand out with having some amazing color features and such. It fits my love for natural looking colors while also getting that beautiful pop of vibrancy that makes it stand out, such as this combination of Yukon River and Chalkarana, an earthly grayish green color with a vibrant magma orange and a blue spot for both of it sides of its frill, the Taurosaurus has skins that oh god, excuse me. Taurosaurus has skins that really help it stand out in this horde of Ceratopsians. But due to it being very much a Ceratops that looks pretty much the exact same as Triceratops, and if you're the person who thinks it's a different uh, subspecies of Triceratops, go ahead. But no matter what you think of it, I still enjoy him, but not enough to put him higher among Ceratopsians. The Oranosaurus really got done dirty for its Skittle design skins that it had in the first game, as many of its skins do not really help it stand out anymore, even though its posture and design make it stand out. Although, a point that makes it go higher than it would otherwise is the fact that we have a body variant of a Camp Cretaceous model, but even then, those skin colors are even worse than this model. And personally, I do prefer this model over the other one, just in my opinion, I feel this one poses more of a threat, and I do like that it does so. But unfortunately, it still falls a little bit down on the list for me, even though it was one of my favorites in the first game. Polacanthus is one that, while being very, very unique with its um, design, with I love with me loving this sort of split personality of spikes at the front, lumps at the back, and being just unique all in general, its color palette is really, really pale, such as you see before you, and it really doesn't really help it stand out for its uniqueness. If it had at least one proper vibrant color or one earthly color that just felt very nice for it, I think it would be much higher on the list. But unfortunately, not enough to win it further. Styracosaurus, unfortunately, is another one from the first game to be let down in the skin department. While it's got great patterns with the Chalcarana vibrancy on the frill, the body color as a whole feels really less unique for me. The first game gave it some awesome skins like its jungle and silvery skin, but unfortunately, this game didn't really want to give it many good, good popping out skins. And for its earthly skins, they're too few and far f to use. Being the first ever, being the first ever pterosaur in the entire Jurassic Park franchise, appearing first in the Jurassic Park novel by Michael Crichton, Ciarodactylus wins higher than it would normally, due to that alone. And the fact that I love Ciarodactylus as a creature as a whole. It's got a uniqueness to it for its size and shape and behavior. But unfortunately for me, the skins really don't do this thing justice. They're all too pale and dull, other than like one or two. And unfortunately, they're not really any vibrancy or earthliness that really give it a majestic feeling that it should, that it did in the novel which is why it's down here at this place in the list. Australovenator is one that I wish I could put higher, but unfortunately I just don't use them enough to do so, and because of that, I'm going to put him down here. Though he's got a unique build, a dinosaur from an Australia environment is always a welcome treat for me, even though I put Mudabarosaurus so far down, and for color patterns and such, he is really, really awesome. But in, also, in terms of unique animations, he doesn't really have too many to boot. But, you know what? I still enjoy him very much in my parks when I do use him. I just don't use him enough to put him higher. That also goes true with the Alamosaurus as well, because while I do absolutely love it, it unfortunately does not stand out for sauropods enough for me. 
it's got a unique build and the spikes and stuff, even these unhealthy spikes that I feel like a doctor should check, it unfortunately doesn't have any skins that really pop out for me too much. It's got a few that like can fit for a sauropod, such as this one you see before you, but unfortunately Alamosaurus does not have enough for me to be like, okay, yep, yeah, I can go with him over other ones on the list. Being the first dinosaur that was a new addition that we got introduced to for Jurassic World Evolution 2, Celiophysis was one that I was really, really, really hyped for, but unfortunately, due to not having the ultimate skin collection, and the skin pattern not really having much variety to it either, the patterns and the colors push Celiophysis down, even though being a Triassic dinosaur does give it a huge advantage among others that are lower on the list, Celiophysis wins for me on that as well, but not enough to go any higher. A theme with Ankylosaurids is that they have gotten dirty with skins over and over, and Euoplocephalus, while having some that are still good like it did in the first game, unfortunately not enough to really make it stand out anymore. Excuse me. But Euoplocephalus is still a welcome treat to use, and I do enjoy its cute, happy-go-lucky energy, but unfortunately, even though it's got some weird spikes on its legs, which I never actually noticed, Euoplocephalus is not unique enough to win over. Plesiosaurus is one that is kind of a mystery for me because I used to really enjoy him, but unfortunately, newer updates have actually done him worse than he did at the beginning of the game, in my opinion. And that is for one reason. The rock addition to the lagoons should have included Plesiosaurus. That is, without a question, one of the reasons why he is so low on the list for me now. If this were at the beginning of the game, he probably would be in the top 50 for sure. But unfortunately, due to the fact that he feels less unique now, when you got Archelon and Nothosaurus able to climb on top of the rock formation, and this guy, someone you'd expect to also do the same, not be able to, it unfortunately has lowered him in ranking. And with that, he's got some alright skins, but the pattern is, well, kind of pointless, really, when it, in terms of a lagoon species, because it is literally a few spotted scales and a line going down his back, which, in a murky lagoon, if you don't pick the most vibrant one, it's not going to stand out enough to make much notice, really. Which, unfortunately, while I love Plesiosaurus, it unfortunately is not winning due to the fact that its behavioral traits have been denied much. If it changes, it'll probably go up way higher, but for now, I can't do that. Proceratosaurus is one that still feels unique among the smaller carnivores, and also has a lovely color palette, but all in all, I don't use him too much still, but all in all, well, I say all in all a lot, but in truth, Proceratosaurus is one that I absolutely love, and I hope that I can use more of, but since I doubt that he'll get any more unique than others, I don't feel like he's going to increase too much in the future, but Proceratosaurus is still a welcome treat no matter what. Styxosaurus for me is one that looks creative and unique, but also at the same time feels a little, a little underwhelming. Due to the fact that it was announced to be one of the first lagoon species to have bioluminescence, and the fact that it was only faintly seen through its neck, made me laugh and also cry. Crying because when, unlike with the Parasaurolophus, where if you go sky high, you can still see them right at night, the lagoon species does not get that same feature. You get up too far away from it, you're not seeing it, even in the lagoon itself. And unfortunately, the laughing part is just because, as a survival skill, having it only on your really, really long neck 
kind of seems like a very, very bad idea, as some Mr. Kirby and Mrs. Kirby once said on Site B. It's a very bad idea. But, all in all, I still love him, and he's got some great skins as a whole, but unfortunately the bioluminescence feature just doesn't really pop out enough for him to win me over more. Capijara is one of the most unique pterosaurs of all time and is absolutely a treat of cuteness and devilry, but unfortunately, skin-wise, he's got a medium level for me. I wish there were much more skin variety colors that he could use, but all in all, I still think he's a great addition and I love using him, but just wish that he had more color to him, like this one shows. Pentaceratops is that ceratopsian that feels like it's not going to throw like itself around with its sheer weight, but its power, because the fact that it stands much like a moose would, rather than the more held-to-the-ground appearance of other ceratopsians, Pentaceratops wins for me there, and for having really good skins, it still does so well. But unfortunately, I don't use him enough to appreciate those two features, which hopefully I'll change in future parks. But unfortunately for me, I can't put him higher even though I absolutely love him. Kentrosaurus is a addition that really worked well with having two body variants, as it's really nice to use as both a adult version and a juvenile version, which is an awesome win, having some pretty good skins all around, but other than that, it doesn't really stand out too much. It's got features of other ones that make it work, such as like having a Stegosaurus feel, but also having the spikes of stuff like Gigantospinosaurus, but it stands out just enough for it to really win me over. Dimorphodon is that one little pterosaur that I really do enjoy using, but despite that, doesn't really pose too much for me. He doesn't really make himself unique among the others, and his skin color variety is average, to say the least. Although, I do enjoy the addition of the Dominion version, which helps him sort of be unique, as you can have an adult version and a younger version if you wish even though the smaller version looks like a tiny little nightmare from hell, I still enjoy him, but not enough for me to put him among the other pterosaurs yet to be added to the list. Sinosauropteryx is one that is really cute, really awesome, but due to the fact that he does not really get to be seen too often is why he's down here. If I'm in the species viewer, he'd be only he'd be much higher but in terms of like the game as a whole i usually add him to other enclosures and not one that like works on his own because other smaller ones like that i feel like using first but i still enjoy him i love seeing him go after people and goats but all in all i think he just falls a little short and it's such a shame because he looks like a devilish red panda to me. I don't know why I made that conclusion, but he's cute, he's awesome, and I enjoy using him no matter what. Just not enough to reach the top half. Pteranodon is one that is a controversial one throughout the entire franchise, and I'm going to make even more controversy by saying that I actually prefer the Jurassic World variant over the Jurassic Park 3 variant. But the reason he does not top the um, top half is unfortunately due to two reasons. One is his skin roster is very poor as a whole. And two is because there is a version that I prefer over the Jurassic World version that is not in this game. And that is the Lost World variant. We do not have that one in the game as of yet. And it is very, very unfortunate in my opinion. So, because of that, I have to put him much lower on the list. I wish he were much higher than he is, but if they added that Lost World variant, and even with that new model gave it new colors, even with the JP3 one, if we could use this one and have different colors on it as well, 
it would be much higher, but this one, I'm not a fan of the colors too much for the game at least, and I'm not a fan of it as a whole. But I still love Pteranodon, even this version, I love it in Jurassic Park 3, but I don't love it enough to push it farther. Pack A Rhinosaurus is one that screams unique, but also at the same time is very, very struggling for me, because unfortunately, I don't really see him used as often in my parks, and also, he just doesn't really speak to me as much anymore. I do love him, and I'm glad he finally was added to the game, but even with all of his controversy in the films, he does not really stand out for me in this park, park building game enough to win higher. Metricanthosaurus has been done dirty in this game as well for skins, but is still awesome. And while I am still annoyed that he's not been shown live action or even in Camp Cretaceous for the films and shows, I really still love this guy. And it's why he almost makes it to the top half, but due to the lackluster skins and such, and just constant disrespect he gets, I have to put him lower on the list, guys. He is still cute. I love nicknaming him a Burposaurus based on his burp-like call. But unfortunately, he is not pushing it for me this time. Geolopterus is one little bat of hell that is totes adorbs and freaky. And has great skins. But unfortunately, I don't use him enough to do so. And... Considering that he is a much newer dinosaur as well, doesn't really help him too much either. I do like using him as like a little thing that like irritates the larger pterosaurs, but other than that, he doesn't really do anything. He doesn't attack people in any unique way, and other than his feeding animation with the um, bug feeder, he doesn't really stand out among the other things, unfortunately. But still, a cute addition. Very vibrant colors that I absolutely love, but just not enough to push them further. And now we get into the Sophie's Choice area. Now we get into the really Sophie's Choice territory, guys. This is where it started to get really, really, really hard for me. Now it's where it's like, oh no. So while we're not over the top half just yet... It really feels like we're there already, because Elasmosaurus is one of my favorites of all time. Like, I love it in real life, and despite this controversial opinion, I actually love the design for it in the movie. I mean, not the movie, in the game. I love the unique beauty of it from a distance, but then up close, you see a dragon-like monstrous face... With kind of weird zombie eyes, I'll admit, but still, it really helps it be unique among the other plesiosaurs. And it has great colors to boot as well, and just sounds quite pleasant in the lagoon, which some of the other ones do as well, which is why they're higher on the list. But Elasmosaurus, while not making it the top half, fills my heart with such joy and terror that I love it. If not for having great scenes in the Jurassic World movies, Apatosaurus would be far down the list. But, unfortunately for some people, I have pushed him up much higher due to the fact that I absolutely love Apatosaurus. While he's got probably the worst selection of skins of all the sauropods, really, he is still absolutely amazing. I just wish that we had more vibrancy, which is why... Despite his cuteness and amazingness, he doesn't make it over the top half. The Carcharodontosaurus, the first of the large, large apex predators of Jurassic World Evolution 2, is just shy of the top half as well, but it is not due to being a faulty creature in any way, shape, or form. Unfortunately for me, the only reason he is not higher it's because of an addition that they added for him partially complete, and that is JPOG. Because while he has his JPOG calls, which won him much higher than he would be without them, he doesn't have his JPOG-inspired skin as well. If they were to add that as a 
beautiful gift to us fans and give us that nice black obsidian looking Carterodontosaurus, I would be in heaven. I love that design. And while this one is kind of 50-50, as it kind of feels like it swapped with Acrocanthosaurus, really, with the spiky back and head, I still enjoy this one. I enjoy using him a lot, but just not enough to push him over the list. And along with him is his rival, which is where it gets really controversial, more than even Scorpius Rex. And that is, of course... The Spinosaurus, just, just not making it over the top half, Spinosaurus falls under due to the fact that I have a lot of rough relationship with him. I love Spinosaurus, and in this game, I love the fact that he got his new animations, which actually pushed him over Carcharodontosaurus, believe it or not. In my original list, he was below Carcharodontosaurus. But with those two new animations, that made him stand out a little bit more, which is what I want to see for a lot of creatures, really. They would push up them up or down a lot more. Spinosaurus falls flat for a few reasons. The first is that for skin roster, he does not have a really good roster as a whole. Other than his movie one and maybe two others, he doesn't really have anything really, really good. He's got some okay ones and such, but none that really scream, I want to use him more than others. And for patterns, he's got some meager ones to boot. Other than Felioflax and Rana, which Rana's just mainly because it works with the movie version of the Spino, Felioflax is the only one that really works for me, and that's because it gives it a nice, creepy, bloody aesthetic for its face, as if it's a thing not to be messed with. But unfortunately, as a whole, it doesn't really have enough to boot with it. And the other reason is because I have hated how it's been mistreated in the franchise by the creators. It has been basically only been used as a rival to T-Rex, but have no proper character other than the expanded lore that fans have built for it. They have teased so much information for it that it was one of the most mysterious creatures, but they never want to do anything with it. And it frustrates me. And then when Camp Cretaceous came out and such, and they brought the same Spinosaurus back... It filled me with more joy than anything. But then, they recycled it fighting the T-Rex, and like in, Camp, like in Jurassic Park 3, it was done poorly in my opinion. Because other than the final fight with the T-Rexes, it really doesn't do anything in that show that makes me want to be like, oh yeah, that's awesome. And the fact that it doesn't have its spinal roars in the show really boots it down there. And I know what you're thinking. What does this have to do with Jurassic Park, well, Jurassic World Evolution? Well, unfortunately, my opinion on the shows can affect my opinion on dinos that make the transaction, which was the case for this lovely spined lizard. The final one below the list, Trophionagnus, is unfortunately just shy of making it on the top due to the skins being a little 60-40 in my opinion. 60% good, 40% not so good. Other than that, I absolutely love its uniqueness among the pterosaurs. I love its um, creativeness. But other than that, I don't really have anything positive or negative to say for Trophy Nagus, other than he's just topping the bottom half by a sliver. Sinoceratops is one that I absolutely love in the films, but in terms of the game, I still love him. It's gotta be said. I like that it's a weird looking creature, even though like it's not fully accurate to what it should be. I know many people have a problem with its face, but you know what? I like its face. I don't have a problem with its color palette, as they feel very earthly natural to me. And some have a little bit of vibrance that just work enough for me. And for me, my skin palette is either crazy colors that really make it pop out, or very earthly ones that 
don't feel too dull and boring, but enough to really make him feel natural. And this guy fits that boot, and the fact that I love Sinoceratops wins him again. Momenchisaurus is one sauropod that I enjoyed in both games just because he's quite the majestic beast, but also at the same time, he's got some actually really good skins in this game, which is why he makes it over the top half, because while I don't use him too much in comparison to other sauropods, even some lower on the list are actually used more often. I still prefer this guy over them because he actually has some really, really good color palettes for me. They don't feel too pale and dull and boring, and yet they're not too crazy out of the blue that they just don't work for me in terms of my taste. They fit right in the middle for me, and that is why he is here in the top half. Iguanodon is one that's kind of a weird friend of mine because I love him, and I love his movie version, but I also don't want to put him higher due to the fact that unfortunately, it feels like the uniqueness of him that was in the first game has faded away. Like, he still can attack other dinosaurs and stuff like he did in the first game, but due to the fact that the game really doesn't like showing him, like, fight and brawl, you don't really get to see it enough anymore. Like, when I put him against larger carnivores in a battle royale, anytime I see him fight, it's just a chomp and he's already down. Not even a unique kill animation, which I have seen he does have. It's just, you really get to see those things, which is why I would put him higher if we did. But in, like, the normal battles that I do with him, that I don't get to see them as much as I want to, which puts him down a little bit. But he's got great colors, great... Um, structures for both the Dominion variant and the Evolution variant, and I don't have any complaints there. Iguanodon is awesome. I just wish we got to see more of his badassness. Like, if I could see him boot a small carnivore again, it would bring me so much joy. But unfortunately, we don't get to see the boot often. Or at all, really. Herrerasaurus is one that I absolutely love the freakish colors of him. He kind of reminds me of Troodon with the weird poisonous look of his vibrancy, but he also has a good number of natural colors, and the pattern itself, I can go with or without it and have no complaints, really. There's a few patterns that I think don't really work with some of the colors, but some of them work amazingly. Even though it kind of looks like he's got a flesh-eating virus or something, I still really enjoy the Herrerasaurus, and even without the patterns, he's still an awesome Triassic creature. Which, being a Triassic creature, automatically boosts him enough because we don't have enough Triassic creatures in my opinion. Once it was the largest pterosaur in the game, now it's still a fun dinosaur. Not, it's not a fun dinosaur, Austin. It's a fun pterosaur to still use. It's got some good color choices as a whole. It's got a uniqueness to itself as a whole. And I just enjoy seeing the Gene Stenbergia once in a while. And in fact, I think many people still do as well. Leave in the comments if you do. But Gene Stenbergia still holds up as a really well pterosaur. Being part of the deluxe DLC, it was one that I was absolutely looking forward to adding to the roster when given the opportunity. Albertosaurus is one of my favorite all-time dinosaurs, and being a homeboy himself as well, as I live in Alberta as well, he gets bonus points there. But Albertosaurus is one that is absolutely amazing for being an underdog that really helps him stand out. I love using him no matter what, as a Tyrannosaur itself, having a beautiful color palette and design, and I love his eyebrows of wisdom and cuteness. And, all in all, Albertosaurus is a really good dinosaur that I don't have any real complaints about. Other than the fact that I wish he could be a little bit more unique in behavior-wise, other than that, he stands out very nicely for me. And speaking of herbivores of Alberta, Edmontosaurus is right next on the list. It wins for me for having some good colors, including its um, current one that you see before you, which... Again, 
I wish that we could see this guy in the films or shows because we know he was a canon dinosaur. I know he was labeled as extinct, but I don't care. I want to see a Montosaurus. He is awesome. Let me see a Montosaurus. And also the reason he's so high is because he actually has a unique function for himself as he's that hadrosaur that l gives the presence of being like a bulky one that does not take anyone's hard hits. Even though he unfortunately does in the game, he still has that posture and attitude that feels like he's something that you wouldn't want to mess with as a certain carnivore. After all, if they were able to survive hits from a T-Rex in prehistoric times, I think many of the carnivores should be crap in their pants in terror at this beauty. Nothosaurus is the next on the list, but also is one that I'm kind of a little annoyed with. I do wish that we could have the option of him being a land or a lagoon species. If they were to give us that option where you could hatch them from either, I would have been putting him way higher on the list. But unfortunately, due to that, he's not cracking higher than he is now. But he's got absolutely stunning colors. He's unique in the lagoon as well, and he's just an awesome addition and such, being a Cat Cretaceous one, and of course being a nightmarish vampire with those vampire front teeth. I wouldn't mess with him, but I absolutely love him, and hope we get to see more added for him in the future of this game. You cannot spell Jurassic Park Underdog without including Ceratosaurus because he is the definition of a dino that came from the bottom of doo-doo, literally with his first and only scene for nearly 20 years being a scene with him with Spino Crap. Ceratosaurus has climbed his way from that pile of doo-doo to being one of the most popular dinos in the franchise. Though he's gotten hit with a major discredit in this game as he unfortunately does not have too many good skins but he is unique enough that makes me love to use him and it pushes him much higher though other than that I can't really say anything positive or negative him other than I am so glad that this dinosaur is no longer just being registered as the dino who smelled Spinosaurus crap he now has his own story away from that crap, and I love him for it. Being the dinosaur that gave nightmares to all who read the first novel, and to me for watching it eat Dieter Stark, and also having nightmares where I thought it was eating me, or hiding under my bed, or also eating my parents and sister, this thing, yeah, this thing scares me still. I'm 20 years old, and I still have nightmares about this little thing. But, in terms of the game, I still love him very much. I love the fact that he's able to attack people since the Malta DLC's inclusion. And, he is really, really awesome. And I've got no complaints for the compy. Other than the fact that I wish that he would just walk around more often than he hops. But other than that, he is, like... A nightmare of cuteness and terror. Lystrosaurus is that one little cutie that is absolutely amazing. Not a dinosaur or anything related to them whatsoever, but is absolutely amazing. Having his eyebrows of wisdom and such, Lystrosaurus made his name known in Dominion by ripping the head off an oviraptor. And my only complaint for him in this game is that he can't do so with Oviraptor in this game. And also can't really combat any of the small dinosaurs as well, which I'd love to see more of. I wish that he could, as it'd be really cool for him as well. Maybe they could add some fighting mechanics between him and something like Oviraptor, Moros Intrepidus, Compies, Homalocephalae. If they had like a mini, mini, mini battle royale, that would be absolutely awesome. But... Lystrosaurus is absolutely a treat, but just not enough uniqueness to him to win higher, even though he is amazing. The Pachycephalosaurus is the dinosaur of all time for me, as he is cute, he is dangerous, 
and he's not going to mess with anyone. And also, in fact, for some reason, he reminds me of a kangaroo for some reason, where he's like, yeah, I'm going to mess you up royally. I think it's in the hands, really. They look like... They remind me of kangaroo's hands for some weird reason. But I love the Pachycephalosaurus, even though for skin roster, it's not the greatest of all time. It's good enough that he wins this spot on the table. Ankylosaurus is a dinosaur that I absolutely love using in nearly all of my parks, and while having a lackluster skin roster as a whole, he is aided by the fact that we do have a bumpy variant, but that's not a ultimate win for me, as I'm like, okay, it's alright. But, you know what? Ankylosaurus is still awesome to use, I just wish that it was a little bit more unique, and then it would be much, much, much higher. But, still, I'm biased, I absolutely love it, and also we do have the Jurassic Park 3 one, which is another one in itself. The Oviraptor is perfection for design in perfection no matter what. Has one of the best designs in the entire franchise by far, and the only reason he's not higher is because he doesn't really do anything unique. He is the first omnivore for the game, yes, but he just doesn't really do anything in terms of combat or really anything else. I just wish that he was a little bit more unique in the behavior-wise, and he would skyrocket, guys. Color palette is absolutely endless for perfection. Like, Every single skin he has is a winner. The patterns are all winners. And, yeah, Oviraptor, perfection in this game, other than behavior. If we had him in behavior, he'd be much higher on the list. Amargosaurus is that sauropod that makes himself properly unique, really, and has a pretty decent color palette, I must say. I know some people don't like his color variants and stuff, but you know what? They stand out just enough for me. They feel natural, and they have enough color that I'm like, yeah, I like him. And he's just really unique. Only downside is that that uniqueness with the spikes on his head don't help him in combat whatsoever. If they were to do so, like say maybe a Ceratosaurus tried to bite his neck, but then got impaled by those and died due to it, if they had a behavior like that, I'd be like, oh yeah. This guy's going up. And the fact that he has a face like a horse of cuteness and also some dangerous looking teeth, actually. Ugh, god, that's, that's spooky. But all in all, a Marcosaurus, a lovely addition and absolutely a cutie. My second favorite Ceratopsian of all time, Nasuda Ceratops, won my heart the moment it was announced for Battle at Big Rock and has been on a win streak for me all the way. In Jurassic World Evolution 1, he became one of my favorites to use, and in this game, it's no exception. With some pretty top-tier skins as well, I absolutely do love him. My only complaint is that we don't have the male variant that we got in the Battle of Big Rock show, and also in Dominion, as we actually saw a male variant there as well. Other than that, if we had that version, I would be absolutely in heaven. But... I'm almost there. I'm just knocking at the doors. Dryosaurus is absolutely adorable and cute, and I do wish that he had a little bit more behavioral uniqueness to him, but all in all, he's an absolute treat, and ever since the latest update where you can have dinosaurs freely roam around your parks without them, like, scaring the crap out of everyone, I've enjoyed actually just putting Dryosaurus walking around on the path, and just minding their own business with people walking around them. They're kind of like how the Calgary Zoo has their peacocks wandering around everywhere they please. I enjoy doing that with the Dryosaurus as well. He's one that really fits with that. Say what you will about the design, but I absolutely love the Baryonyx. I do prefer the um, version that was on the Jurassic World website, no doubt about it, but Baryonyx has won my heart by being one dinosaur in the franchise that has really made his presence well known by his feats. Whether it's his scene in Fallen Kingdom where he terrifies Claire and Franklin while vo volcanic lava spews around them, 
or his scenes in Camp Cretaceous from Season 2 onwards, Baryonyx has done really well. And even in Dominion with his small screen time, Baryonyx also did very well for my heart there as well. Whether or not you like the design, I don't care. I enjoy it for what it is, and I enjoy its awesome behavior. Dunkleosis is one creature that I, no offense, never thought was going to be in the front for like this game in fact I actually thought Megalodon would have been in here before Dunkleosius but lo and behold I was surprised along with many others who thought that this was going to be the Megalodon but no offense I'm more happy that it is Dunkleosius because he's absolutely awesome I love the fact that he's like intimidating as a giant fish even though Paleom Paleontologists have gone over how he's not actually as big as he is described to be. But you know what? Who cares? I love Adunkleosius. I love his color palette. And the fact that he's quite unique among the creatures is a win for itself. Chunkingosaurus is absolutely adorable and totes adorbs to the end. And is just unique enough that really I love using him. He's got some pretty good skins all around. Very natural earth-like ones that just fit my roster no matter what. And you know what? I can't have it any other way with this cutie of chunking as yours. Look at that face. It's so good. The little tiny dinosaur of Tyrannosaurus Rex's family, Moros Intrepidus, while being a traitor to said T-Rex by f cleaning off the teeth of his rival. Unbelievable, lad. Unbelievable. But otherwise, Moros Intrepidus is a cute little devil as he attacks people and goats and stuff. And of course, in Dominion, he attacks that little tiny cute mice ferociously. Though still, he's absolutely adorable. He is amazing and such for design, and color palette is perfection to its finest feet. He has no bad colors in my opinion, and pattern is absolutely really, really good, but he works fine without it. Even if he has a naked face, he still is amazing. The first dinosaur of Jurassic World Evolution 1 and while not the first for Evolution 2, Struthiomimus won our hearts for many people. Whether it's fans of Becky or just fans of Struthiomimus as its own, it is absolutely a treasure to use in my parks and has a great color scheme to boot. And you know what? I wouldn't have it any other way. Struthiomimus is a win-win-win and also, yeah, a win. Velociraptor is one of the ultimates in the films, but in terms of the game, he comes across as a disappointment, due to the fact that other than his film skins, he has basically no good um, natural skins. There has never been a time where like I would be like, oh yeah, I want to use um, this skin over, um, say, the Tiger Raptor or the JP3 female and male or even or even the paley crappy kind of looking 97B pattern none of these skins do anything for me and I feel like it's like the first game where they were like yeah I know nobody's gonna want these so we're just gonna not do any effort for them then again, for the first game, all we had were these bad skins. We didn't have any movie ones yet. That was only until the last DLC that we actually got these. Which, unfortunately, puts them down much lower than one might expect. But still, I love Velociraptor. I'll use him every time I get an opportunity. But I gotta be fair with his... Um, disqualifications for being like terrible without his movie. If his movie ones weren't here, he wouldn't even make it to the top 75 probably. A raptor that succeeds the Velociraptor in terms of the game Pyroraptor absolutely destroys. It has some awesome skins and its movie one is to die for. Even though I'm not a fan of its face as I do wish it was more like bird-like than devil-like. 
I still absolutely enjoy using the Pyroraptor as it stands out among all the raptors with its unique behaviors. Whether it's its jumping animation where it's as if it's flapping its wings or such, it absolutely wins for me with the feathery aesthetic and how it actually uses it. When you look at the skin, you instantly think of the Liplorodon and what it could have been, but Kronosaurus still makes itself its own creature of uniqueness by being one that can also attack the Mosasaurus and also eat from the shark feeder, and just all in all, a great design, a great color palette, and just all in all, great. No complaints really for me here. Stiggy Moloch is absolutely a cute little bugger with an amazing design and I love his boxing aesthetic with those boxing hands and stuff ready to rumble dumble and it's just all in all cute and has some great scenes in the two movies he's in and you know I just want to see more of him other than that no complaints here for him Homalocephalae is the definition of a cutie cutie who has the best and most gruesome animations and such and feels really unique among all of them because he feels unique with what he works with with all the other species. Nearly every species feels like it has a unique animation with him which makes him feel that much more unique. Only thing I'd like to add to him is if say like if say they add Microceratus eventually in the future I'd love him and Homalocephalae to also be able to interact with like say the rocks or also the um, placeable trees as they have their own rig you could easily have it where they climb up them to hide from a predator or something I would absolutely love that as an inclusion but other than that I have no complaints Dino Karras is one that I was kind of worried about being too similar to a future um, member of this list but he managed to make himself unique enough that he absolutely wins for me. He's got unique animations, a unique behavior set, colors to die for, and was an absolutely win to the franchise, or mainly this game, when he was included in one of our previous DLCs. Acrocanthosaurus wins on having one of the best color varieties in the entire game, both natural and vibrant, and also for having a uniqueness to him that I feel the movies have failed to realize with many of their dinosaurs, as there's a worry that some will look too much like others, like this guy looking too much like T-Rex or so on and so forth, but you know what? This guy shows an example of how he can be similar in like structure to a T-Rex, but feel very unique, with the color palette alone being much more unique, and also the fact that he looks like he's a bloody beast and such as well. And just, you know, he looks different as a whole. And I absolutely love that. That's why he wins for me. He doesn't need to have, like, spikes on the back of him to make himself unique. But he's unique enough that I'm like, yeah, I know which one's which. I'm not going to mix them up. But maybe that's just me. But you know what? I absolutely love him. Barbadactylus is is one pterosaur that I absolutely love on just being amazing with colors, amazing with animations and behavior, though I do have one little complaint and that is the crest on the horn that is at the back of his head because it should not actually be there and it's only there so they could add more color to him, but I do wish that he just had the two little spikes of the crown that he had in real life because it makes him stand out much more that way than he does with this little fin crest instead. That's just my opinion, but still, he wins high enough to be where he's at on the list at number 26. Sukamimus is my all-time Spinosaurid, and in this game, he does not disappoint. He's got an ultimate body structure, ultimate colors, and just is the ultimate Spinosaurid for me in real life, and in this game. No complaints whatsoever.
Gallimimus is absolutely amazing with his design, absolutely amazing with his behavior, and is just an all-time Jurassic Park fan's dinosaur of all time. And color-wise, he's got some pretty nice ones, I've gotta say. Even he's got his other movie variant that is very unknown to most fans, which I absolutely approve of as well. Dimetrodon is a absolute treasure. He has the perfect design for me. He has the absolutely perfect behavior, and his attacks on people is to die for. And the color palette of him is absolute amazingness. I don't think there's any skin that I would say no to putting on for this guy, including patterns. With or without patterns, Dimetrodon steals my heart. Shonisaurus is absolutely beautiful and absolutely perfect. It has nothing wrong with it. Its behavior fits it perfectly. The fact that it can go up against bigger creatures as well, awesome inclusion, and being one of the only species in the lagoons to have perfect skins is absolutely amazing. And you know what? I have no regrets of him being added to the game. With that amazing call of beauty, Attenboroughsaurus is absolutely amazing. Like, it is the dinosaur that was in the deluxe DLC that I knew I needed. The rest, whatever, in comparison. I could have been fine without any of the others in the Deluxe DLC, but the moment this guy was included, the moment I saw his beauty, I was like, I've gotta have him. Not only because he's named after David Attenborough, which is just win enough, but his calls, like, I will open a lagoon and just put, like, dozens of these in there and just listen to their calls. I'll just watch them in, like, absolutely mesmerizing harmony. And you know what? It may be, sound weird, but the reference that I feel like he reminds me of is a mermaid. Because it's absolutely horrifying, yet also at the same time, it's something that I can't get away from. Like, it's like pirates and mermaids. It's like, you know they're bad, but you can't get away from it. And that's what its call reminds me of. It's hauntingly beautiful. And skin colors are amazing as a whole. He's got some all-timers and stuff, and the pattern, you know what? Even though it's quite faint and stuff, it's actually not too bad. It gives him a nice definition on his scaly lines and such. And for those who don't like um, Elasmosaurus's dragon face, he is a perfect exception to this because this guy is absolutely beautiful up close, but not too monstrous, which is why he ranks so high on the list. My favorite raptor of the franchise is the Atrociraptor, at least in this game. For the movies, I'm not sure yet, but you know what? I love the story behind him, and all I want is more Atrociraptor. They are awesome, they have an amazing scene in the movie, and all in all, it's just a great dinosaur, and even if it didn't have its movie counterparts like these four amazing raptor members, he's got colors and patterns that are absolute amazing. It is not like Velociraptor where he was just left to fend for himself on movie skins alone. No, these um, color ones are perfect with or without patterns and are just amazing. Oh, and also... Do I even need to mention the fact that he's got amazing animations with dinosaurs and humans? Well, if I do, he's got those. The Indominus Rex, the fierce and untamable queen, is at number 19. And that is because it is a perfect representation on the perfectness of it and other hybrids because... It is the hybrid that doesn't feel like it needs to go all out monstrous. For me, I love using Indominus in my parks because of the fact that it feels like it is a dinosaur. It doesn't need to look 
beyond a dinosaur. Like, yes, it looks like a hybrid, because we know it's a hybrid, but when looking at other dinosaurs in this game and such, it fits in very nicely. It feels like it belongs in a Jurassic World Park. Or Jurassic Park Park, even, even. I just... <laughs> I just realized what I said. I just said Jurassic Park Park even even. Oh my god, that's so... Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny, but it is. <laughs> oh my god, that was priceless. I'm so glad that was on camera. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god what why is that so funny to me why i don't know why that's so funny but anyway anyway let's get back to it but yeah this hybrid works for me because i can use him in parks and he gives me great inspiration for both sort of aesthetics i can use him for both um a park and a facility which for scorpius rex I don't really get either of, really. And that's why Scorpius Rex was at the bottom of the list, and why Indominus Rex is all the way up here. The prehistoric creature that is absolutely here, only due to the fact that it is beyond bias, Mosasaurus has terrible skins, the worst of any creature in the entire game, has been denied its glory in two of the movies, especially Jurassic World Dominion. But despite all that, my bias self has put it over all of that negativity and has put him here because it's the Mosasaurus. That is the definition of being biased. Good night, nothing else. <laughs> Allosaurus was great to begin with, but with the inclusion of the 2022 Battle at Big Rock slash adult, well, just the adult variant as well, Allosaurus absolutely wins for me. Only two complaints that I have for it is that we don't, unlike with things like Dreadnoughtus or the Camp Cretaceous things or Dominion things where the film variants don't also get, like, the color palette choice, I wish we got that with this guy as well, but other than that, Allosaurus is awesome. And you know what? I do wish that it did have more of its film calls as well. Like, it's got its ju juvenile calls and stuff, but I want to hear, like, its Battle of Big Rock adult calls, because those are amazing. Though we don't really hear them too much, unfortunately. But he's got great skins great behavior, and just is like one that always pleases me whenever I put him. There's no bad skin for him. And patterns, they're absolutely amazing, and he works great without them as well. There's no complaints for the Allosaurus. The all-timer of hybrids is the Indoraptor for me, because he fills me with so much inspiration for, like, this game, whether it's a facility park or even, like, a, um proper Jurassic Park or Jurassic World um, style exhibit or island. He gives me so much inspiration. And the reason he tops Indominus over that is because he's got the awesome unnaturalistic um, behavior and such that he has earned. And he's got a league's better skin variety. Like, there are no bad skins for the Indoraptor for me. And of course... We've got a white Indoraptor, y'all. Y'all wanted it. We begged for it in the first game. We got it in the second game. And patterns are absolutely amazing. And I have no complaints for the Indoraptor. He is Indoraptor, and I am here for him. The Cryolophosaurus is one of the new dinosaurs that absolutely steals with being beyond unique. Like, there is no dinosaur in this game that looks even remotely like him in design. And color palette is absolutely amazing. Animations are amazing. There is nothing wrong with this Arctic Cryolophosaurus. The Dilophosaurus 
is a ultimate in the franchise, being denied for decades to return to the franchise. But even if you don't agree with me, I was in heaven in his scenes in Dominion. I may not like that Owen Grady, like, absolutely grabbed and choked him, even though it does make sense for Owen's character and the fact that he was a dinosaur handler. It makes sense for that. I still love him. Dilophosaurus is amazing. He's got some ultimate skins, including his movie one, which is Sally Adar Hosko and um, Rana. But even more so, he's got some ultimate color variants with Gambia River Basin, to name some. Like, there's no bad skins for him, really. They all work very, very nicely. And the patterns... The patterns, I would say he's got the best ones in Felioflax and probably Rana. I feel the other ones are, eh, they don't really work entirely with everything. They can work with some more than others, but Felioflax and Rana work with all of the patterns. But he pushes up even higher because of his Dominion variant, which is weird to say, but this is the first time that I would say that a... Jurassic World era version of a Jurassic Park era version is superior. This one is superior to the Jurassic Park version for me. I think it's just the more naturalistic color of it. Like the toned down earthly color green and such. And the vibrancy but yet toned down vibrancy of the frill that just really works for me. Like, when I first saw it, I was like, that's not really too much different. But then I saw it again, and I was like, it's absolutely amazing. Like, it gets all that I want. It reminds me of what I wanted for Rexy, that they sort of failed to do with her because of some errors with her skin color. But this one reminds me of what natural animals do when they get older. Their colors, they still stay there, but they fade and they go more earthly, like a crocodile does. Crocodiles, when you see them in, like, pictures or colors, you see ultimate vibrant ones, which are of the babies and such. But when you see an adult crocodile, it's very, like, toned down and such. And this is why I love this Dilophosaurus, because it feels right. I could have this as an adult version, just on color alone, and I love it. I love Giganotosaurus. It is one of my ultimate carnivores in real life, and the moment it was announced for Dominion by Sam Neill, I died. And even though its design is controversial, I love it. It makes it stand out in a way that, like, fits its story. It feels like it's a real predator. It's scarred. It's torn. It's aged. It's absolute perfection. I may not agree with the spikes on the back completely and stuff. Like, I would have been fine if it's a more natural looking style. But you know what? I still love it. And what makes it so much higher than it already is on the list is because we got this. The body variant option. When Malta DLC released, the update gave us this, and it was to die for. These skins are absolute amazement. With or without a pattern. Like, without a pattern, it's awesome. With a pattern, it's awesome. It's absolute amazingness. Now, the only thing I would add to this guy is another Dominion variant. A 65 million one. Because... If you pay attention very well, you know that the one in the Biosyn Valley has a different coloration to it than the one in the Prologue. The Prologue actually is more of a whitish gray tone than this one that is more of a greenish gray tone. It's small, but I would really love that to be added because it would just be nice to have that variation. And... Other than that, Giganotosaurus, the fact that it has its movie calls in this game, is heaven. The moment the trailer came out for Biosyn DLC, and it didn't have that Giganotosaurus roar from the movies, I was in terror. But the moment they added them, I was like, I'm in heaven, because Giganotosaurus 
reigned supreme. If it was this version of the Dreadnoughtosaurus, not, not, ugh, that's not what it's called. If it was this version of the Dreadnoughtus, this guy would nowhere be this high. He would be probably in the bottom three, guaranteed, because his color palette is not too great. His design is not too great, but Dominion had something to say about that, and we got one of the best designs of all time. I absolutely love it. It feels like a titan. Even though in the game this is not actually the biggest version of any dinosaur, it f its presence feels bigger than it actually is. And you know what? Its color palette, whether it's the movie one or even some of these ones, is some of the best of all the sauropods. They feel very nice. Like, none of them are too vibrant for me, but they feel earthly. Like, they don't feel too pale and boring. They have enough color in them that make me happy. And that's why he is up here this high. The Changosaurus, the Pinocchio Rex, the infiltrator for Disney itself is absolutely amazing. Like, Changosaurus design, to die for. Color palette, to die for. And is just to die for. It's a Tyrannosaurid. What could go wrong? And the answer is nothing, because Changosaurus absolutely wins in the list. The ultimate lagoon species is the Archelon. Uniqueness, 10 out of 10. Behavior, 10 out of 10. Colors, oh my god, just send me to heaven already. It's an 11 out of 10. Archelon is ultimate. Like, he goes on the rocks, which is absolutely amazing. And being the one species that cannot be killed by anything makes it stand out. It's the one species that you can actually put in with the Mosasaurus, even when hunger and food and attack animations is turned on, and have no worry, because it'll be fine. And it doesn't even really panic too much as well, which is another win. Archelon is the goat of the sea. The biasness strikes back as well as Triceratops reaches high into the list in the top 10 as well at number 9. But it's because I like the Jurassic World design and I love the Jurassic Park design. Wait a minute, did I just say both again? No, no, no let's try that again. I love the Jurassic Park design as you see here. And I like the Jurassic World design. I do. I think it's very nice and such, all things considered. It's not as good, but it's still really great. And for colors, it's got some nice earthly ones as well. They're not all great, but some of them are good enough for me. And that is why he is in number nine. The Utyrannus is the ultimate feathered Tyrannosaur. Well, actually, it's because it's one of the only ones, with Morris Intrepidus included. But... U Tyrannus is just amazing. Great colors, great design, like one of the best designs for this game as a whole. I love the lipped look. I love the fur. Well, it's feathers, but it looks absolutely amazing. And the color palette is like perfect. There is not one bad one for this entire thing. I can use every single U Tyrannus and be happy. With or without a pattern, it is just perfection. The Stegosaurus is a ultimate of my heart. It is one of my favorite herbivores in real life. It is one of my favorites in this game as well. It's got some great colors, great design for the Jurassic World and the Jurassic Park or Lost World variant, and has got some ultimate colors, such as Papurana. Papurana is the ultimate um, toy nostalgia for me because it reminds me of like those classic toys where it didn't matter if it looked realistic or not. It felt awesome. And you know what? It does look realistic. It's like as if it's flushing blood to it to create a pattern. And it works with every single one here. Like 
I can put any Stegosaurus skin other than the Lost World one because, well, then it doesn't have a pattern. But even the Lost World Stegosaurus is absolutely amazing. And it's Stegosaurus. You can't go wrong with it. Throw it with a carnivore, it's going to absolutely destroy them as it has done so in many of my battle arenas. The Brachiosaurus is a ultimate must-have in my parks no matter what. It's one of those dinosaurs that if I do not have it in my park, it is not complete. Even though it does not have really any good skins other than the Jurassic Park one, even the Jurassic Park 3 one is like, eh, great colors, bad design on the head. But all in all, Brachiosaurus is absolutely a treasure. It's a must-have for my parks. A design of perfection. Quetzalcoatlus is absolute master of the skies and master of this list, almost, at number five. And it is just, it is perfect. Skins, absolutely perfection. Patterns, absolutely perfection. Size and awesomeness. Oh my god, it's absolute perfection. The only reason it is not higher is because of one thing. Well, actually two. It does not soar like it should, as it flaps way too much, and it does not walk. If it had a walking animation, where it could just walk through a forest and be all so terrifying, you'd have me in heaven. It would be the perfection of perfection itself, without a question. But it is very close to that. The Carnotaurus is ultimate, ultimate dinosaur because it has a perfect design for me as it's got the nice, awesome horns. It screams it's tough even though it's got tiny little arms that do really nothing, even less than a T-Rex's. But you know what? It's not here because of having pretty good skins all around. Like, it's got some bad ones, I'd say, but it's got some really good ones. And it's not because of Toro being here, it's because of Demon being here. Coco the Demon Carnotaurus is in the game, and he is here to stay. He is absolute perfection. The scars, the red volcanic orange, just red, the black charcoal and silvery gray bottom, the broken horn, it's, it's just beyond perfect. The fact that Dominion brought it back, even though it was a little tiny cameo in the Fallen Kingdom, like, my god, where could you go wrong with this? And if they had, like, a version of this where it didn't have a broken horn, oh my god, I would not use any other version, no matter what. This version is perfection. I've got nothing else to say. Carnotaurus is god. Another dinosaur that I never thought could be improved upon is Parasaurolophus. Parasaurolophus, since Lost World came out, has been in the hearts of many. Even though it was in Jurassic Park and everybody forgot about it there, which is disappointing in itself because it looked awesome there, the Parasaurolophus has been on a winning streak. Whether it's its slightly altered Jurassic World variant, or even it's Jurassic Park 3 one. The Jurassic Park 3 one is a nice inclusion as well. The the bioluminescent ones from Camp Cretaceous, while in the day kind of look like boring as hell, it came in Dominion where it got better. Because these three skins that are from the movie are absolute heaven. Whether it's the... Um, Pattern C, that's just a little bit of a mix of the other two. To the Lost World-inspired one that just is got a new model and such. To the ultimate blue Parasaurolophus of perfection. The design reshaping of it, like the head change and the change on its forelimbs, just absolutely win it. Like, this guy is awesome, but this guy is awesome ultimate this parasaurolophus the moment we saw this 
was amazing. I didn't think Parasaurolophus could get better. Like, I thought that if any needed improvements, this was the least likely. And they still nailed it. And Therizinosaurus, just a sliver, a sliver from the top, makes it at second place, being the ultimate dinosaur. It's seen in Dominion, gives me the flashbacks to the horrors of Jurassic Park and the Lost World that I absolutely love. The design, absolute amazement. The uniqueness in the game, perfection. It is perfection at its finest. And the only reason it is not number one, the only reason is because the patterns. The patterns for me, while they are great in color, don't really work for this guy. Like, on the face, it kind of is like... It's kind of trying to be like Triceratops and Ceratopsians, where it's that vibrant spot on the skull. But it just doesn't work. And the spots on the feather doesn't really work. For me, the pattern should have been like this for the Therizinosaurus, where it's a little bit of a highlight on the face, like that bluish hue... And also the reddish hue on the back of it. If that's what the pattern was for these guys, it would be perfect. Because it looks better without the pattern. That is the only reason. I'm even fine that we don't have a blind variant. But if we had a blind variant, it's going to the top. And if the blind variant also had unique animations or behavior with it, oh my god. Frontier, give us a blind Therizinosaurus that acts differently to the regular ones. You will have me in heaven. Or even do it for the whole thing in general. Like, new behavior range for blind dinosaurs is what I want to see. More behavior. That is all I want. But, there can only be one ultimate dinosaur. And that is T-Rex. T-Rex is me being biased beyond bias. But still... Even with movie skins like this of ultimate perfection, it still wins. Because it's got good skins in general. Like, T-Rex in the first game had sort of mid-level skins other than its movie ones. And, like, this game absolutely wins still. Like, it has some really good ones for me. Like, I love using these ones. Like, I've used these ones actually a few times. Like, don't just use the... Um, movie ones and like even the um feathered t-rex even though it feels like rushed in some ways i still really like it now if they did a um version of this but with all of these colors as well oh my god that would be amazing but t-rex is just too ultimate now that's just me like i just love t-rex it's my favorite dinosaur there's nothing wrong with it for me I can't give it any complaints. And after that, about nearly two and a bit hours of recording, which not sure how long the final video will be translated to in length, after cutting out all the pause. And if you want to just join the Patreon as well to help support the channel even a little bit more. And also, while you're at it, I want to know what is your ranking of these species. Let me know in the comments with maybe your top 10 or heck, even if you want to add your full 110 in the com comments, sorry, not comics, let me know what they are. Just once again, thank you so much for watching, liking, and subscribing. And until the next time, stay safe, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye!